Hey there, friends. Today I'm going to be finishing off a bag that I started probably two or three months ago. And it's a backpack, and I've got to put some straps on it for the back, make sure that they're adjustable. I've got to put the straps to close the top. It's kind of a roll top. And I've got to put a liner in it. The liner that I'm going to do is going to be blue, I want to say gingham, but I'm not, I don't think it's gingham. It's, it's blue pinstripe, blue pinstripe, not a railroad stripe lighter and no zipper, but it's going to have no zipper on the roll top, but it will have a way to close it. Maybe Velcro. For the straps, they're going to be padded and be bright orange. I need to get over to the sewing machine and spool up some thread for the bobbin and then get measuring and get sewing. So refilling the bobbin is not that complicated. It's just a little tedious. I need to take it out of the machine, which is located under that door, and then put it on that spindle there and hook that thread up to it and then press that pedal and then the bobbin winds. Do you want do you want do you want that again, right? It's I gotta take the bobbin out of there, put it on there, hook that up to it, and then press that pedal thing. And then it winds. Let's see what that looks like. Empty bobbin. Goes on there. Right, this is out. So they can put this on here. This is my thread. I've already put it through the tensioner. Whee! Okay, so here we go. This is the way that I do this bobbin nonsense. Take your bobbin and I put it through one of these little holes here. Suck on that string, get it wet. So it gets some, goes through that. I take it, then I put it through here. Pull that through. I put this whole thing right on here. Make sure you don't cut it. There we go. It's not cut, that's kind of straight. Hit that forward. All right, we're good. Hey, mama. Never disobey your intuition. Always gets you in trouble. Especially if your intuition is telling you something is going to get you in trouble. Trim tail. Hit guess. Make sure this stays tense here. Got this wound. This goes in here like this. So it goes counterclockwise. Trim that so there's no problems. That's very long. Trim that. Right, make sure it needles up. Put it in the chamber. Now we must thread the machine. Come. Come here. Every machine's different. Everything has been modified. I didn't modify this. I purchased this machine with this in through here. Out through there. First stop. First tensioner. In here. 
through there. First guide. Beep. Second tensioner. Beep. Beep. Around the puller. Boop. Another guide. Dink. Ugh. I keep on wetting it because this end is cut and every time you put it through one of these things or you move it, it becomes a little more frayed and it's a little more challenging eventually to get through the needle down here. White needle. All right, so I'm going to trim this again. Bunk. All right. Mm. And this. this is a front load, so this goes right in here. Bam. This is a huge needle. I think this is either 18 or 20 gauge. All right. Over here is where you've got your presser foot. This pushes the presser foot up and down. And that's a that's a pro machine pro machine feature. You don't really see that sort of action on on home machines. Perfect. All right, let's get this shit started. And so, anytime you're starting something like this, you want to make sure you hold on to your thread. Otherwise, that first stitch could pull it right out. I'm going to start off the webbing and go on to it to secure it. Okay, there we go. Hold, hold, and start. Pull that. Go down the outside. Sounds a little crooked. It's still gonna hold it steady. slippery. Oh boy, there we go. Oh no, that's because that's there. Um, that's fine. I just melt that back into there. Thank you. 
hopefully this side goes easier. Next up, putting this jammy together. <coughs> I just saw how difficult it was for the machine to grab ball on the felt. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew it down. Like I'm going to use their stitch as a guide. Good. All right. Yeah. Let's go see how this goes. Kind of nervous, but it should be okay. I'm just gonna do the one before I go do the other one. Make sure it works. And it's gonna work. It's gonna work. I know it's gonna work. Do the work. <laughs> it's gonna work. Do the work. installing car phones. I used to install car phones in cars. <laughs> that was fun. Had to wire them up to the battery. We did everything right in the fuse box. Kind of just jumped onto existing things. But I always had to grab like a bunch of handful of screws to go and mount something somewhere. So I always had this uncanny ability to grab the exact number of screws that I need without looking or counting. Sometimes it'd be 16, sometimes it'd be 14, and you know, if I needed an extra one, I wouldn't pretend like I got it right, and not, but I'd go get the right number of screws for the job. But I was able, always able to just reach in and grab the right number. I think part of that has to do with quantum theory and quantum physics. Quantum entanglement, spooky action at a distance, all of that stuff. And how our minds can project forward and back in time. Yeah, it's all wild stuff. Absolutely fascinating. But none of that matters right now because I gotta go stitch this these bamboos up. Stitching.
we believe that our consciousness exists in our brain because that's where our, our eyes are and that's where our brain is and we know that if you we know that you, know, you can snuff out life by destroying the brain and that consciousness you can measure consciousness in the brain but our perception of consciousness it appears to us to be in our brain and I believe that's because that's where, where our eyes and our mouth and our ears are and when you speak out loud the centralized point that you hear from would be your localized consciousness, wherever that center is. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Localized consciousness. Right, this was a good idea, stitching it on this side like this. Getting very close to the edge, which is what I wanted. Okay. Pull that through and actually stitch that out. The reason why I like to stitch that out is so that when you start your next run, it won't pull out. And the reason why it won't pull out is because you've got it's because you've got this thread behind it so that it can't pull it out. Now, I just did that really close on that side. I'm going to run it down this way now. and toys.
Oh boy. I don't think this 